Good morning, folks. Welcome to the PT on Ice Daily Show brought to you by the Institute of Clinical Excellence. My name is Dustin Jones, one of the lead faculty within the Older Adult Division. Today is Wednesday. We're going to talk about all things older adults. Today's topic at hand is form is function. Form is function. Why form and technique matter for reasons maybe other than the risk of injury. All right, we're going to dive into this, especially in relation to the older adults that we're serving. Before we get into the goods, do want to mention a few things. MMO Live, we are a done for the year, uh, which this is where we take the time to kind of turn the knob a little bit, tweak things, make minor adjustments to our product to make sure we're delivering the best product possible. We are hitting the ground running at the start of 2023 with our live courses. So we um, are fully booked on the first half of the year. We are more than likely going to be close to y'all. So if you've been wanting to take MMA Live, Modern Management of the Older Adult Live, uh, we would love to have you all there. Our online course is Essential Foundations and then Advanced Concepts. Uh, those are going to kick off at the beginning of January. Uh, EF for Essential Foundations is January 4th. Advanced Concepts is the 12th. All right, let's talk about this. Form is function. This is a big uh, debate, right? We talk about technique, we talk about form, uh, especially if you're over on the PT Twitter sphere. About every week, there's some thread talking about why form doesn't matter, technique doesn't matter, and then you'll hear the opposite of form is everything, form is everything, uh, and, and you'll you'll see this as a big debate. Um, <clears throat> what I want to bring to this conversation is the perspective from the geri uh, geriatric side of things. Um, <clears throat> we we cover form and technique. In, in our courses. So if you ever go to MOA Live, MOA Essential Foundations, or Advanced Concepts, we talk a lot about points of performance, what we want to see out of particular movements when we go to apply them in the context of rehab or in the context of fitness. We will cover faults, how to troubleshoot them, uh, in to try and move people towards kind of the standard, if you will, of a particular movement, whether it's a deadlift, whether it's a squat, whether it's pressing weight overhead. We cover this pretty extensively, and we feel like it's really important. But what's been interesting is we have been teaching this for about five years now, is in our courses, we haven't had a lot of conversation or debate about why we cover these faults. Uh, and, and Jeff Moore, the CEO of ICE, uh, came to our course this past weekend, and he thought that was kind of interesting, uh, that we haven't had a ton of pushback. We've had one question, uh, to my, uh, my recollection, where we kind of dove into this topic, and this is, this is something we want to speak to in the public forum as well, just to make sure that we're all clear why we cover these things, because I know some of y'all have been thinking about it. Why, why do they put so much emphasis on these faults if you've come to, to some of our courses? So we've had one question. It was on our online course. I'm going to read it verbatim. Just had a question about the movement uh, assessments. You describe uh, butt wink, knee cave, etc. as faults that need addressing. I was just wondering whether you consider these as problems for this specific population or just problems in general. In either case, could you explain why you regard them as problematic? Is there evidence that these movements increase the risk of injury either in the short or long term? I freaking love that question, right? I mean, there's such so many angles that we could take this. This is a very, very good conversation that we want to have, especially in the context of when we're working with people that potentially haven't exercised before or moved a relatively heavy weight. Uh, you know, if we overemphasize these quote unquote faults, uh, that kind of contributes to that nocebo culture that we see in healthcare, right? Do we want to go down that route? Why is this stuff important? Why are we hammering on these faults? So I'm going to break this down question by question to hopefully come to an understanding of our perspective here at ICE and, and in an MMOA division. Is there evidence that they increase risk of injury, right? So these faults, you know, knee valgus, uh, you know, that she mentioned, uh, butt wink, for example, is there evidence that there is an increased risk of injury? Now, that's a big question, right? You go to Twitter and you're going to see all kinds of sides of that debate. And we don't really have a ton of research that is necessarily studying injury risk. What a lot of those studies that are looking at technique and the influence of technique, they're looking at the, the physics of the movement. How does uh, technique and form uh, change how different parts of the body experience forces, for example. A great one that's been studied uh, is in relation to the squat. What happens when we don't allow the knees to translate forward uh, over the feet or allow that full ankle dorsiflexion, right? What happens when we stop that anterior translation of the knees? Well, that ends up where we're having to shift our weight a little more posteriorly. We put a lot more pressure 
and force through the hip. We also uh, have a greater torso angle in the squat that puts more shear forces at the lumbar spine, which may or may not be a great thing, right? And so a lot of the research related to the squat is showing, hey, we want to move through a full range of motion. Let those knees go past, go past those toes. Use all that ankle dorsiflexion that you can. If you're able to do that, you're probably going to be able to maintain a more upright torso. You're going to be asking less of the hip in terms of, or it's not going to be experiencing as much force. And that lumbar spine is not going to be experiencing as many shear forces. And you're going to be able to squat a whole lot of weight, right? So that's what the research really looks at uh, is more of a matter of physics rather than you know tracking tracking injuries per se so with that being said there's a lot of assumptions built into that right we assume that if we're decreasing the force at the hip uh, when we're allowing the knees to translate forward in the squat that that is a good thing right what we're also seeing is folks actually get overall relatively stronger when they are performing the movement with those same point points of performance so that's, you know, we could debate about that for hours upon hours about the risk of injury. I don't think that's the biggest issue when we're talking about our population in geriatrics. I think we're missing the boat because that's where we focus on. Is there evidence that they increase the risk of injury? I'm not worried about a risk of injury with many of my folks. Here's what I'm worried about. Let's go to the second part of the question. Why do you regard these faults as problematic, right? If it's not the risk of injury, what are you concerned about? Why are you talking about these faults? These faults become problematic, not in the sense that I think that they're going to increase the risk of injury, but they impact performance, right? They impact their function. Form is function. They impact their function. Here's the issue. If folks are not meeting kind of the, de the defined points of performance for some of these particular movements that are, are kind of accepted principles in how to move heavy weight in the most efficient manner as possible. It's not a matter necessarily of opinion, it's a matter of, of physics. And if we are able to meet those points of performance to move weight, relatively heavy weight, and in a very efficient manner, then we are going to typically have better performance and better function. That is what we're after. We are trying to maximize people's performance, especially in the realm of geriatrics. It's really a matter of physics. It's a matter of physics. That's why we hit on these faults. I know that if I can clear up a knee valgus fault, for example, now I'm not talking about an adductor whip at the bottom of a squat, but someone has a true knee valgus, uh, you know, dynamic fault in their squat. If we're able to correct that, we're going to be able to help that person squat more weight. That's a beautiful thing. That's a great thing to think about. I don't even think about the injury side of things. I'm thinking about the performance side of things. Form is function. Now that is, that's from Jeff Moore, that lovely quote, and that's a play on form follows function, right? That's a big um, principle. Uh, it's also a debated principle, but a big principle in the realm of architecture, right? Form follows function. You focus on the function of a space first, and then you form, uh, you, you, modify the form around that intended function. Form follows function. And what we think about in humans, especially in older adults, is that form will often dictate function. Form will dictate performance. How they do this movement will be a big factor and variable into their overall function and performance. So form is function. Now, Here's why it's a big deal in this population of older adults, why we focus on technique, why we focus on form. We got to think about the context of, of the situation when we are working with folks. Many of these folks that are coming into your door, whether you're outpatient or coming into your hospital or you're going into their home, whatever setting you find them in, they need help, right? They're often struggling in many different domains. And many of these folks are giving max efforts for very common daily activities. We call this 1RM living. If you've taken our course, we hit on this super hard. The research is really interesting to show that even very, very healthy individuals uh, in the older adult population can be expending 80 to 85% of their max effort to do something like coming up out of a chair and sitting down, going up and down stairs. Healthy folks, right? So we think about the context of sick care, many of the folks that we're working with Every effort, every common thing that they need to do that we don't even think about is a max effort for these individuals. And if you think about the accumulation of multiple maximum efforts throughout your day, what do you think that does to your quality of life? It's rough, right? 
That's one R in living. We want to put an end to that. And one way we can put an end to that is to increase their capacity and make that 85% effort to come up out of the chair more like a 70% effort. And think of what that does to their life. That could be a matter of technique. That could be a matter of form. You focus on that form, you can improve their function over time. Form is function. And so in the realm of geriatrics, we're often trying to squeak out as much performance and function as possible. We're trying to make the tasks that they need to do as easy as possible for them. This is absolutely huge for folks, and this is how we can really improve the quality of lives of the folks that we're serving. Form is function. That is why we talk about the faults in modern management of the older adult. That is why we're trying to clean up some of this technique to make sure their technique is as good as possible, to make sure it's as efficient as possible, to make their life easier. Form is function. Now, here's the other part, though. Right? We talk about these points of performance. The standards of a movement. A deadlift is a great example, right? We typically would like to see a, a relatively, quote unquote, straight or neutral spine throughout that whole movement that we have limited uh, you know, movement throughout that, that hinge. Straight lines are typically stronger lines, and that's what we're going for. But many of the folks that we work with have some solid thoracic kyphosis on board, right? That straight line ain't happening, right? <laughs> we may be able to make it stable, uh, and hopefully somewhat static as they're moving through that hip hinge. Um, but that straight line ain't, ain't happening. It's going to be a solid curved line. This is in those instances where uh, that quote unquote perfect form or those points of performance where we're trying to meet that, it may just not be on the table. It may not even be a possibility with many folks that we work with. This is why as we focus on cleaning up these faults, we also want everyone to think about the concept of optimal over perfect. How close can we get to those standards given the current situation, their abilities, their limitations, their deficits? How close can we get there? All right, cool. Then let's progressively load it up over time and build their overall capacity. So we don't want you to think when you're working with uh, you know, some of your older adult patients that you have to meet these uh, standards of performance before you can start to load up. No, that is not the case whatsoever. You'll be waiting forever to be able to do that. You get as close as you can to those points of performance, those standards, and we start to progressively load. And for some folks, that progressive loading is going to look slower than others, right? Based on their capacity, based on their symptom behavior, based on what you're seeing in their response to your initial dosage, it can take a long time, right? Like in the home health setting, I may have started with no weight on a hip hinge, reduced range of motion, and over an eight-week period, the heaviest I may have gotten was a 13-pound kettlebell about 12 inches off the floor, right? From our perspective, that doesn't seem like a lot, but for that person, that is, that is huge, that progression may be a little bit slower. So form is function. Dial in that form. We want to get as close as we can to those standards, those points of performance, so we can maximize their function, we can maximize their, their performance. Form is function. This is huge in the context of these folks, especially in the context of 1RM living. However, don't think that quote unquote perfect form has to be achieved before we start to load. You're gonna waste a lot of time Optimal over perfect. How close can we get to those points of performance? And then let's load it up. Let's start that progressive loading so we can create adaptation and help end one rep max living. All right. I want to hear your thoughts. I know some of y'all are going to disagree. Throw it in the comments, y'all, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Instagram. I'd love to have a conversation. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Um, because this is something that I think it's easy to read a lot of this literature, but then we go out in the real world, right? We are working with these human beings and we're trying to get them as fit as possible, as quickly as possible, uh, that this is birthed from a lot of experience uh, from several of the faculty. I would love to hear y'all's thoughts on this. If you're on the podcast, go ahead and hop over on Instagram or YouTube as well. All right, good stuff, y'all. Have a good rest of your Wednesday and I'll talk to you soon.